morning and welcome to Love Every Moment, coming to you today from Gainesville, Texas. Today's verse is 1 Peter 2, 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, for they stumble because they are disobedient to the word, and to this doom they were also appointed. Well, this comes after last week's verse, and I have the link up here, that talked about the stone that the builders rejected. So now we're finding out that that stone has become a stumbling, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. What's interesting is the same stone that could be the chief cornerstone for us and a glory for us. It could be our foundation and our protection. That's Jesus, the living stone. That same stone can be a terrible and awesome stumbling stone and a rock of offense. In fact, Isaiah says that stone will crush his enemies. So Jesus has two very distinct sides depending on how we treat him, right? So the uh, stone is stumbling and a rock of offense. It even explains it more. For they stumble because they are disobedient to the word. Remember, as I've been saying, they like to take the living stone, take out their chisel, and chisel away at it so that that stone fits their worldview. And they chisel away at this scripture and that scripture that they don't like so they could have their own form of salvation or their own Jesus that matches their own fleshly desires. It doesn't work that way. And if you do that, you're going to find out that that stone that you've chiseled has become a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. Now, that quote is from Isaiah but instead of going there today, Paul also quotes this in Romans 9, and I thought that would be a good cross-reference for today. 9.33 says, just as, it is, ah, just as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. So there's again that awesome judgment or also the glorious salvation. But let's back up a couple of verses to see how Paul puts this in context. In verse 31, Paul says, But Israel, pursuing a law of righteousness, did not arrive at that law. Verse 32, why? Because they did not pursue it by faith, but as though it were by works, they stumbled over the stumbling stone. They wanted a works-based salvation so they could earn it and brag about how awesome they are. But faith is needed. You can't have salvation without faith. Now, be careful, because some people take this faith and then they turn it into works. In other words, they say, I have so much faith and my faith is so amazing and cool that God now owes me salvation based on my incredible faith. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way either. Yes, faith is involved, but Scripture says salvation is a free gift of God and we do not earn it even by having amazing faith. So, besides, God gives us faith uh, himself. Now, back to the main verse. At the very end of the verse, it says, And to this doom they were also appointed. Well, that's very scary. To this doom they were appointed. That sounds like predestination. Well, you know what? It is. And predestination is clearly in Scripture, in multiple Scriptures. And there is predestination. God will predestine some of us to glory and some of us to perdition. Well, wait a minute. What about free will? Well, yes, we have that too. We get to choose whether to follow God or not. Well, how does that reconcile? I don't know. Thanks very much, everybody. Now, my best understanding is that, yes, we have free choice. We could follow God or not. But God being God, he knows even well in advance what our choice is going to be. And based on that foreknowledge, he prepares a place for us in glory or the road to perdition. So, if you're wondering, gee, what am I predestined for? There's one easy way to find out. You can love him with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. Love the whole Jesus with your whole life. And then you'll know, oh, I'm predestined to glory. <laughs> or, of course, you could also reject him, and then you'll know what you're predestined for as well. So with that note, let's choose to love every moment, because then we're going to love every moment. I'm your average Dretch, and I hope you have a great week.